Let's rock and roll, boys. Okay, you boys ready? Ready. Ready, James, ready. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Austin Cummings, and tonight I am joined by Danny Tortelli. Hi, I'm Danny. Hi, you, Danny. And also, Matt Schultz. Hi, it's good to be back. Hey, and it's great to have you. It may be the mic didn't spike that time, but maybe it did. We'll find out in post. And you found out. Oh, I can try it again. Hi. Thanks. And let's get it one more time, but just super loudly. Hey. (laughs) Listen, you. I turned the head. Yeah, no, it was clever. It was a trick, trick of the trick of the audio mind. Okay, uh, on tonight's episode, we are really delving deep into the Switch. Uh, you know, we're about breaking news here at another Nintendo podcast, and as such, we're going to be focusing on last like month's games right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. So let's talk first about Mario Kart Tour. Hit the music, Matt. Hit it. Uh, (laughs) wow and believe it or not we had to pay for that uh Uh, have either of you played mario kart tour yes danny danny what have you played you come to this podcast bringing what your looks thank you (laughs) they're good man you know they're, they're on their way um Rough. We'll get to my games in a minute. Okay. Spoilers, it's chess. Uh, Matt, <laughs> what did you think of Mario Kart Tour? How much of it have you played? Uh, I've probably played six of the, I guess you call it like cups? I don't know. I don't know what to call them. Yeah. Cities? Like, like sets Missions? Of Most Grand of them are like a single race at a time, or are you yeah. playing the whole set of four or six of them? Yeah, exactly. So um, I played a good amount, and enough to kind of Kind of get an idea of how they monetize the game and how. Yeah, you get that, that idea is. right quick. That that comes to you in about one second when you launch your first character out of the pipe. Speaking of which, what characters have you launched? Very true. Uh, I've launched Toadette. I've mm-hmm. launched uh, Koopa Troopa. I just launched um, uh, Bowser, and I just got one more. Oh, Peach? Did I get Peach? I got Peach's parasol, but that's. Anyways, it's... Let me ask you this. Bowser, you think he's yeah. up to no good this time in the I Mushroom so. Kingdom? He is. He's actually pretty fast. I, I like him. Um, so it's interesting because take, yeah. this whole thing is... Um, it's, it's fun. The, like, the mechanics of the game are really fun. Like, it's pretty easy to learn. At first, you're like, holy crap, I'm just like swerving all over the map. Mm-hmm. Please uh, don't swear. And then... <laughs> and, and then as you get you kind of get used to like how often you need to take your thumb off the screen um mm-hmm. i was like having a blast and i'm like i'm beating all these like people these are like from yeah. all over the world and then I realized, i'm crushing nerves left and right go ahead it was a crushing feeling to find out that that was all just downloaded like ai bots that you were racing for the first like four or five or i don't know maybe still racing them yeah honestly um, i don't kn- i agree and the, i had the crushing moment too because i like so another game that came out was Pokemon Masters. I'm playing a lot of that. And if you leave Pokemon Masters when you're doing an online co-op match, even briefly, it'll disconnect you from it. And it'll, it'll sub the enemies in with AI and you get a message saying, hey, there's a server issue. Right. So I've been playing that and I played Mario Kart and I got a text message from work and I was like, oh, shoot, I'll go over to that. You know, I, I wonder how far behind I'll be in Mario Kart. Went back to Mario Kart only to discover like i hadn't lost any progress in the race and i was like well this is <laughs> suspicious <laughs> um the uh everyone it was just a lot of good sports out there who were like hey everyone pump the brakes hit that brake button and wait because austin has a text message to respond to and then we'll race and but, like oh um, so nice of you all yeah thank you this is a great community <laughs> um but uh, okay so let's Bye. talk let's let's take it out from the top what do you think of the control style so for people who have not played yet danny yourself uh, you hold the the phone in in portrait mode, which pretty much everything you know is transitioning to yeah. in this world, uh, which I kinda, honestly kind of welcome. Now it's so much more natural. I just did a, a trip with some friends. I recorded a lot of video in landscape uh, to kind of put together into a, a culminating video at the end. But my friend, you know, naturally just records everything in portrait, and I I do feel like uh, so many things are shifting that way. You even see screens nowadays that are you know made in that vertical. Uh, or, or at least oriented that way uh, in public spaces because it's just the familiar format. And I appreciate that the Nintendo games on the phone have all stuck to that. There's 
And that when they first what? did Super Mario Run at that Apple conference, yeah. like you yeah, put me one and hand. really wanted you to use one. Be able, what did he say? Like you could eat a cheeseburger mm-hmm. and play right. Mario, and um, that was kind Dang. of the whole shtick. And I was and like, I've never eaten a cheeseburger with one hand. You should yeah. never. Like I use a fork and a knife eyes. because I'm a messy boy. Um, <laughs> But okay, so for those who haven't played, you basically slide your finger from left to right. You're automatically always going forward. It'll smart steer you from, you cannot fall off tracks. Um, but you basically always... You can fall off tracks. You just, which, which tracks do you fall off of? Yeah, pretty much any, any of them that don't have uh, rails. Like rails. Like, I've definitely fallen off. Especially Even the dino one? Do you have to like, kind guards? of force it off? Yeah, yeah, you have to. It has to be pretty forced like your your drift was so bad that like because it, it's it auto corrects me most okay but it I will auto correct it definitely had you definitely have the antenna like thing yeah, going for you Mario Kart yeah uh, i haven't even played lit yet and i know you turn off autopilot <laughs> so true <laughs> you tell him danny pro gamer only here danny <laughs> i don't think but you definitely can't in this game right it's like meant no. to be very yeah you're always going forward it smart easy. corrects you a little but Big emphasis on grinding, and that way it's kind of or like sliding, you know, left and right, building up that. Yeah, you're char- that charging meter. up your drift, and then and then go. Yeah, you know, using a big the emphasis on that, kind of like uh, I've been playing some also uh, Crash Bandicoot, oh, Crash Team Racing, right. yeah. and that game has a big emphasis on you know really utilizing the drifting, and this too, it's not as complex, but pretty much you live or die based on how well you drift into turns because that's your big thing so every left and right movement is an exaggerated turn which is which is weird because you can actually turn off power drifting yeah so it'll just turn for you and drift automatically or you can actually you know kind of wave your thumb back and forth as you've created that drift so you can charge up there's three charges blue then red and then finally like like a purplish pink flame if like you've been drifting long enough to get an extra long boost which is great the first color uh maybe maybe yeah uh, we'll i'm mixing we'll up the, the, the first two but whatever <laughs> they're all there um but it's it, it's still tough and uh yeah. oh great thanks <laughs> thanks alexa alexa living room on alexa turn on the fun master mic <laughs> starts now <laughs> um anyways so and cut back in um i don't know it's it's i i was really upset that i felt like i was doing really good well um and somehow like getting all these like great come from behind wins only to find that i wasn't um but i did enjoy that they kind of like lean like kind of ease you into the game get you comfortable with the controls and it is fun like there are times it's just a, it's two laps and it's basically like a two minute race yeah um it's a smart and it is very concession. it's very pocketable i think this game really is going to shine when you can start uh competing against your friends or doing local play um, whenever they unlock that, something's not. Um, I'm gonna open it up right now, but something's not unlocked right now. Um, and aside from that, like it's like 200 CC, and certain like maps are like all locked behind paying for the gold pass or whatever, right, which right, just seems which is so subscription ridiculous. Based, five dollars. Yeah, and yeah. and so five dollars a month, and it's like you're like, how long are you gonna be playing this game? Hmm. So much that you might be paying over what you would play pay for a, a a full priced mario game on the console or you know mario kart game yeah. like why why would anyone want to do that i mean also, also i consider myself like pretty good at mario kart and i would like to be paid like i would like someone to pay me to play 200 cc <laughs> i'm so trash at wow. it i don't even remotely That's... enjoy it so i do appreciate that like a decent number of the features are there but it does feel this kind of what i want to get into i like the control style i like that it's different it looks good and it runs well. And I think that uh, the microtransaction element in terms of the pipe and kind of ejecting carts and characters is uh, fun. But yeah, it does feel... Um, I You can't shake, definitely, like the somewhat greedy aspect of the game that just feels very... On Nintendo. Yeah, on Nintendo. It's very yeah. pervasive. Like the... Yeah. The pipe is fun, but it feels very loot box because it is. And then the it, it um, is. and then the it's gems, like, there are gems, which is also like such the iOS microtransaction currency, right? It's like the no thing boy. that just the, the abstraction to separate you from your your dollars, right, into gems, so you don't overthink it. And the gems are very expensive if you want to buy them, which yeah. is true of Pokemon Masters as well. And you earn and them like, very slowly, very slowly. And there's also the big flaw of Pokemon Masters. But then Pokemon Masters, you can play everything you can play as a free to play pl- player whereas mario kart you also are limited by a subscription and i wish they had done one or the other i would have been yeah. more interested in a five dollar flat fee 
that did not have the that had gems you received at a more reasonable rate like do you see anyone talking about mario kart like in your circles no one's talking about it no but i see a lot of people playing it i've seen it Hmm. all over the place like people who very like much like pokemon go people you just wouldn't expect to be into mario kart of all ages all creeds um and I, i mean i've been traveling a lot i was at a concert last night and uh the like three college age uh, women sitting in front of us were all playing and like just mm, well. one downloaded it because the other had it and mm-hmm. hopefully uh, not mid concert do you want to come out and say that like you while were we were at the official mario kart symphony and maybe that's the concert was, you're that, at that's a great mario kart con. idea and it needs to be there i want to hear what <laughs> and Matt, what would that, what that song what would like. that sound sound like <laughs> but like more trumpets and like cellos yeah. and mm-hmm. <laughs> they pick up the speed when you get to the third lap too mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right, let's let's go to the next segment. Uh, boys, another game that came out going on to the Nintendo Switch's uh, robust library was Damon X Machina, but none of us played it. The next thing we're going to talk about is going to be Spyro. Danny, it's your time to shine, baby. Tell us all about that dragon. And his Skylander friends, what are they up to? Oh, man, yeah, he's the size of a large cat. He's purple. He's great. Uh, no, but I'm so excited that I can finally play it. My The 10-year-old self in me is just pumped every time I mm-hmm. log in. And you never let him out. You yeah, because you, you lock both... him downstairs. Right, right. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> um, but because uh, you guys, just really quick, you did have PlayStations and played these games as children or not? I, I did. I never, I, I never played... But I, I watched in awe as my neighbor did. Right, right. It was always one of those. And I things. had a PlayStation, like, oh, and I yeah. did not have an N sixty four. Oof, man. So welcome to another podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's clearly um, it's aged well. Obviously, with the you know graphics and improvements aside, you know it's it's a basic plat three D platformer. Um, mm-hmm. It is simple, and yet there's so many times that like simple things I like still mess up on. You're like. Oh, I just moved the Joy-Con a little bit too far. And now I fell in lava and died. You're like, <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. so it's not difficult. It's just like it's challenging enough. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I really no, enjoy it. I'm about halfway through yeah. the first game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was playing some on PlayStation when it came out last year, and I have really strong memories of Spyro as well. And uh, I'll say something that struck me, just like in revisiting Spyro and having people talk about Spyro, is that you know, it really was contemporary to Super Mario 64, made, oh, yeah. you know, in this case made by Insomniac, that really tackles a lot of the same big, you know, uh, paradigm shift elements that Super Mario 64 did when it tackled 3D. And in the case of Spyro, you have all the cool gliding, you have a really good sense of, like, draw distance, and um, mm-hmm. really fairly impressively large worlds for that time. And I think it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really an achievement that you kind of forget because... Super Mario 64 was the standout, but it was not, Spyro was not far off and uh, really achieved a lot of the same things. I agree. It's like a little simple. I, um, I like how Toys by Bob, the developer of this remaster, who did a great job and they did the Spyro or the Skylander games as well. But I like all the personality they give to the dragons that you free from their, you know, stone shackles. But mm-hmm. it, it is funny because it also feels extremely dated in the 90s because even though they all have like really amazing designs, no one says anything interesting. They're all like, Spyro, hold, hold cross to glide or whatever, and it's like you have a paintbrush and a mustache, and are wearing a beret. Like, are you not going to make some reference to art or something? Like, just give me something. And instead, they're yeah. like, you can cross large gaps by using the glide. Which at that point, by the time you unlock that dragon, you've already done it like a hundred like, times. Hi, I glided like, to you. You were on a ledge, right? <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of that. But I. I do like it, and I feel very nostalgic. And also, sometimes kind of spooked. Sometimes I remember being spooked by those games. Nice, sometimes kind of spooked. And I don't, I don't want to unpack it here, but I do want to talk about it. Um, okay, any other thoughts on Spire? How does it run on Switch? What do you think of it? It runs pretty smooth, and I've only been playing it in handheld, um, mm-hmm. so it doesn't even have that bonus of the added boost in dock. Um, and because I've just been traveling so much for work and stuff like that, so it, it yeah, it runs pretty pretty well. Um, I don't think I've noticed any significant or even like moderate lag at all um it's it's all of my experience so far it's it's run very very smooth nice nice yeah i feel like that's kind of been honestly running things in handheld i feel like the switch and the switch light is kind of this way 
in a positive way, which is that especially as we are now later in 2019, we're on the cusp of the next gen consoles for the competitors. Mm-hmm. Playing things in handheld is almost the preferred Switch experience because I think the discrepancies are showing more so in like games that when you play them docked. Like I just watched a lot of Digital Foundry's content. A lot of their um, you know, analyses are like playing this in handheld though, you don't notice this texture issue or this you know change in frame rate or this you know because it has just this 720 it's a little more locked in that way it might run a little more smoothly and also just that screen you're not gonna be able to make out those differences versus Mm, playing mm -hmm. like the witcher in docked is probably going to look you know more obviously uh downgraded than that of a console or pc the uh okay well good update on spyro there uh matt how you doing i'm here good let's let's crank through the last couple items so the final items are uh first i'm just gonna hop into dragon quest 11 s uh that came out just last week on the switch very fun i played through a, probably the first quarter that came on playstation then i waited for the switch one do love dragon quest playing through it again um probably just four or five hours into it really liking it I'm playing some of it in the 2d mode which i have to say is much more impressive than i had expected because um I'd expect it. I don't know if either of you had played the remaster of Halo uh, Combat Evolved back on the Xbox mm-hmm. 360 when they did the remaster. And it had the cool feature where you could hit a button and switch between the graphical styles. Right. Oh, it still does awesome. it now, I, yeah. And I expected something like that. Yeah, you can do that in Master Chief Collection as well. Mm-hmm. I um, had expected something like that with Dragon Quest, which is not the case, though. You have to go into the save area, which are located in the chapels in the series, and um, you have to switch modes. And then you had to switch to like a chapter you've already played which i ended up losing a lot of progress because i which is just on me because i made it pretty clear but you like let's say i was two hours in and and i want to switch 2d mode and like you can do it but to go back to the start basically because i hadn't unlocked like the second chapter and i had to restart but i could keep my experience and the items so i've like do some duplicate items and things but what is so that is a little bit irksome however to their credit like the amount of work that has clearly gone into the 2d mode is much more significant than i thought like the map layout of these areas is is totally unique um and like the enemies are random encounters again unlike the 3d version in which case you see them on the world map and you choose to fight them uh the and a lot of like the just the design layout the way where they've hidden secrets and stuff it feels way uh it really is a smart adaption to be like how would this look on the super nintendo And then lastly, the final game we want to talk about came out on September 20th, and it is Link's Awakening. Danny, hit us with a tune. Oh, yeah, that was it. The classic, the classic Link item, the Foghorn. Matt, tell me what your thoughts are of Lonk's Awakening. Lonk's Awakening. The game's awesome. I mean, one, it's very cute. I've got the amiibo right here. Um, flex, flex. Really does look like a Playmobil set. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the the interesting thing is that this amiibo is pretty much exactly what the game looks like. The most it's just photo real amiibo ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, it's a box boy. Yeah, it, I mean that's uh, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's at first you kind of think you're like lost in a Animal Crossing game when you're starting the game. You're like, oh, the this is shore sure. and these little trees. Right, but, you're in a house um, for most Zelda openings, but yeah. It's beautiful, and I, I wanted to play it on the TV for that reason. Um, so I started in hard mode. I, you know, Austin and I were talking yeah, about like, we yeah, we just like the traditional. Just tell me, just but, tell me. What so happened. I, I got to you, the you cuckoo first out half. or whatever. The chicken, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I see what you did out. there. Nice, thanks. No, I um, you honk out. <laughs> nice. Honestly, oh, I just got <laughs> so much annoyed poultry. of dying over and over again, and constantly, constantly hear the beeping of the heart uh, meter mm-hmm. just yelling at me and right the beat of so the i kind of looked it up link. and a lot of people said that it is annoying until you go out halfway through the game and then oh. the challenge kicks in where you're like thank god i did the challenging aspect of the game because this feels like it might be too easy had i not done the hard mode mm-hmm. however the first half of the game apparently is very difficult yeah i found stage. it to be hard i'm doing hard mode i'm two dungeons in i die a lot but i yeah i like that tension yeah. Wind Waker HD also had a hard mode like this, and I love that. And I want more Nintendo games to do it since most of them skew a little easy. Easier, like, yeah. I felt like Mario Odyssey really didn't get hard until the after you'd finished the game. Then there was like some hard challenges, but really, I like it when games are a little tougher. I like playing Fire Emblem hard. Like 
That game's and I'm yeah. playing and I'm playing that on hard. And that like yeah. as a strategy game, that's the kind of challenge I like. I think that with this type of game, and I was just talking to my brother about this. Shout out to Ben, new subscriber. Oh, uh, welcome, Ben. If you made it this far <laughs> on the podcast, you're welcome on anytime. Uh, yes, I guarantee yes. Um, but him and I were talking one day because he saw me playing and uh he was online playing as well, and he's a few dungeons ahead, but he's like, you know what? Like I honestly like and he played the original um Oh on Game Boy. Uh, the, not the original original, but he played the the remake on Game Boy, right? And mm-hmm. like back when we were growing up, I I don't remember him playing it. The, but on Game Boy Color, we're saying the Link's Awakening DX. DX, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was one super pumped to see it come out. He had no idea that that would ever happen. And two, uh, he basically was saying like I I'm playing this game to kind of just enjoy the story and be back in it. I'm not trying to yeah have you know, to be stressed out over all, all basically sure. about surviving in this game. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's always there if people want to do it on a second run through. But as someone true. Who, so yeah. what happened, though, was I had to stop and delete my not necessarily delete my progress, but start a new save file. Yeah, you can obviously can't swap difficulty modes right in the middle of the game. So not even like one one go at it. Uh, I had to basically start a new file and go through and yeah. keep the same dungeon. Yeah, but I'm glad I did. Because I'm a lot less stressed. It's nice to cut some grass and be like, oh, there's a heart. I need that heart. I know. The I will say, so I'm totally with you. I'm really enjoying it. I played through Link's Awakening on when it came to 3DS. Uh, just the re- virtual console version. Uh, yeah. So that's probably five or six years ago. So it still feels kind of fresh. Um, but the I will say, these are my... Um, I love the look of it. And it, yeah. it plays really well. And the dungeon design is smart. And it's fun to be back in it. I want I want to air these few grievances. Sure, let's go. Okay, air. Let it no, out. It is, it okay, is the wind here fish. we go. A and P hot takes, baby. We know this is why you hear. We're not all just Nintendo fanboys here. Sometimes we level some criticism. Number one, the game is too good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Number two, Laying I wish it were man. more can't expensive. That. <laughs> okay. The uh, but my critiques are this: one, it runs poorly. I like, was going to ask about and that. It. It always runs poor. Like I'm very surprised how poorly it runs. Like does it matter, docked or handheld? It does not matter. I it I'm, always are you, is. Are you? I have. Am I good? Yeah. This all that much. Really good at it. Like it, it's just like the the overworld's just laggy. Or it's mainly the main on? village. It's just okay. Yeah. When we're saying lag, I'm I am meaning it in terms of the frame choppy. rate is really choppy. Like I, the main village is clearly running at sub 30 like the game at max runs at 30 but it's definitely probably 20 25 20 to 25 for most of the village like it's very very noticeable and that is annoying especially when i'm dying and revisiting certain areas and the it, feeling like it stutters it's totally fine in dungeons they do the like the draw distance blur stuff mm-hmm. a lot like the uh yeah. perspective blur is what i mean to say yeah the yeah, yeah. A pr- perspective um portrait mode and um they i think they're overdoing it it looks really <laughs> extreme like everything that's not immediately dead center of the, of the screen is really blurry in a way that feels a little like i, I, I like that, i love that, the dollhouse look i but it's like so much of it is blurry yeah. intentionally really from an artistic it. direction that i worry if it that might be something that maybe that is more work for it to apply that type of filter i don't know but for a nintendo game i'm very surprised by what i feel like runs like not like Breath of the Wild runs much more smoothly than this game. Yeah, but um, Kakariko Village in Breath of the Wild was terrible. When yeah, you but first I got feel it. like this is not that They're different. T- There's no screen yeah, tearing also- in this, but it's like it's it's t- choppy. Like it's noticeably choppy. I think that game had a lot of issues. It just got a pass because it was this massive open world Zelda game. Yeah, yeah but, I, but but even within yeah. the first two weeks of Breath of the Wild coming out, they released like some small patches. Yeah, like they so patched it and they continued to patch it. And I yeah. I wonder if they will do that for this game yeah i'm feeling uh, like i'm not i wonder too matt because i i honestly felt like i wonder if this is not working as intended that's that's how significant i felt like it was now i'm not at all saying it's unplayable mm. and i think probably most people won't really notice it but it's not like a. I find it to be more significant than i've used to for nintendo games what do you think about uh like then all these like nine out of ten, eight and a half out of ten reviews. Do you feel like they're not? I, I don't you think really, they would have been higher. I don't, I don't if think it ran it's a uh, game breaking or anything. So, I, and the, it's still like a great game. So it, I'm not, you know, I think it needs to be mentioned in the course of uh, my right. review for it. 
the if it's a if it's a game that I think it takes kind of a a risk with its art direction, um, that that's kind of then that it deserves to be commented on, right? Like, yeah, yeah like, they went for it, but the blur is it is a bit much. And that's why know, I play I on the big screen. I don't know that the blur like is contributing to the frame rate drops like at all. I think blur is like a little extreme just from like a. Hmm. my taste on it like yoshi's craft world i think is a better looking game it has the depth of perspective blur as well but i think like everything in the foreground is always visible yeah. whereas like link anything it's not apparent in the dungeons but anything that's not immediately centered on link is pretty blurry in a way that doesn't yeah. feel like super realistic to how looking in a dollhouse would feel as much like i that's the only thing that i that's just an artistic thing the frame rate's a different issue. I feel like it's bad and it is worth mentioning because it would be nice if it were patched. Yeah. I've and I don't know Digital Foundry just did a video on this as well. And they're like, we don't know why it is doing this. Like there isn't a good like looking at how it's taxing the CPU and GPU, there isn't like an obvious yeah. answer as to what is happening, but something is happening. So that's why I wondered if it made something that could just be patched. And now I, all I'm gonna do is is notice it now. Yeah, it's thanks, not, Austin. <laughs> sorry, thanks for MP. <laughs> so okay, that's complaint number one. This is really blurry. My only yeah, and again, it's not so much blurriness. It's just the choppiness. Like right, I, right, I right, right. observe it less than thirty, particularly the villages. Okay. The only other thing I want to say is that I think um, Link's Awakening is a great Zelda game. When oh, it came boy. out, it was kind of a proof of concept to bring a Link to the Past style experience onto the portable and mm. it's very successful at that but it is a less complex game than probably every other 2d zelda so is it is it about pricing and Whoa. so your, i am gonna mention pricing beef? yep yeah. and i and 60 dollars is like different for every person of course so yeah it's not um but there are other 60 dollar games you can get that i do just feel like when i look at this game versus um a link between worlds I like the look of this game much more, for sure. And that's worth something. Mm-hmm. And I love playing on the Switch. But the, mm-hmm. like, A Link Between Worlds I, is just a lot more inventive. Like, that game was also, of course, less expensive, but it wasn't like an HD game. And it wasn't, but even it wasn't, that aside, it wasn't like a direct remake. Yeah, even, either, even that aside, right? like, even taking price out of it, frankly, it's like a game in 2019, just maybe just looking at it like that. Like, yeah. Link's Awakening, um, it's not the longest campaign in the world. It's long enough, but the it just doesn't it doesn't throw a lot of or any twists into the mix. Like it, it's kind of just a straight Zelda game. Like yeah. it does have a narrative, small element of twist, and there's like the fun Mario things. Like there's it has its own personality, but I, mm, but I yeah. just feel like when I look at Link Between Worlds, which is a game I really adore, like the you had the walking on the walls mechanic that was. A totally different right. level you had, of puzzle solving. You had a solving. whole another you side had a whole of the world idea. to yeah, explore. The, the 3D slider and the yeah. depth was interesting and affected the puzzles and how you viewed like two floors inside a single room. And the also the jump between the light and the dark world w- yeah. created tons of really interesting puzzles where you jump between you know two areas that one of which would be un- inaccessible in one world and then you flip between and have something cool that then necessitate right. you're walking on the wall like it. Not to mention a cool story with its own cool twists and things and. I do feel like Link's Awakening is like a little, um, it's a little basic. And I do wish that like the dungeon creation element, which is that one extra feature of the game, was a little more involved. Because pretty much everyone is, everyone is panned the dungeon creation thing. Because opposed to it being what I think everyone had hoped for, which should be like Mario a guided Mario dungeon Maker. Mario yeah. Maker style experience. Um, it is really like you have a panel that is like this dungeon room. like now connect it to another set dungeon room so you're just making like a a set of rooms that are all pre-made yeah. which is and some so blame on the producers when they were first announcing it because everyone was asking them like hey do yeah. you think this is going to be like your version of and they they didn't do a good enough job of saying no that's not what it's going to be at all they're just like well i wouldn't say that like they just needed to be like a hard stop no you need to like get that out of your that. head. Like, honestly, I don't really know what purpose it serves in this game. Like, because yeah. you also cannot share levels with friends unless through an amiibo. So it's like, there's, I feel like the amount of value added, if we're just in terms of a game in of that is like pretty small. So I, that's I like my it's... one critique. I wish it ran better. I do think it's a little bit of a simple 2D Zelda game in 2019 that could have yeah. used maybe a new little spice 
Um, and it would have, maybe the way to have done it would have been a more interesting Zelda maker. But it's beautiful. It is a great game. It has a cool story. It has great music. And the art design, I think, it's, I think it's, is it's, terrific. It's, it's supposed to be a nostalgia trip. And I think with every Zelda, especially when, when they're either bringing one back or porting it or you know, taking a look back and at all, they, like, they, yeah. they give like, different creative freedoms to, to yeah. what they do aesthetically, um, you know, creatively with the story. What, and I think we really all got a gift with um, uh, Link Between Worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, it was awesome. And I mean, I'm, I was just recommending it to a friend who was playing this game. I'm like, you haven't played Link Between Worlds yet? Oh my gosh, I will lend you my 3DS to, to, yeah. to play this. But so this just seems like the reason I, I, I was excited and willing to pay the, the price for it was because it was a, a Zelda game I knew a lot of people growing up had played at some point, really loved, and were really excited to see it uh, kind of be remastered for a new generation. Um, and it's a Zelda story I've never experienced before, now suddenly accessible yeah. and updated on the Switch. I don't think that necess- necessitates the sixty dollar price tag, especially for you know you're like I paid just as much for this Zelda as I did for Breath of the Wild. Hey, there are um, the whole Spyro trilogy also completely remastered <laughs> I'm talking for less Ripto's than sixty. Rage. I'm talking Year of the Dragon. I mean, jokes whatever. aside, three games yeah. that are also remastered for forty five dollars. Yeah, Nintendo's never gonna do that. Like they just That's, they're not gonna do that. It's gonna be yeah. a Nintendo Select and it's gonna be fifteen dollars <laughs> off in the future. Um Yeah. I know. It's like but, I yeah. I think like the game it what if I had to like do it again, would I? A hundred percent. Would I recommend like swinging to someone? A hundred percent. Like and yeah. if I had to give it a score, I would give it a high one. You know, it's so it's not damning on the game. I just um I think it, I would have liked to see maybe its own little twist because I just feel like Zelda games have come, come. I hope yeah. a lo- maybe, like, mm. I, yeah, I I do feel like part of me that bother is bothered is because of the price thing and it, and it's really just because I look at it like it's sixty dollars. It is such a simple game. Like it's, yeah. I but so are other games that I've paid sixty dollars for. So it's but it's just like if I. It's also very on Nintendo. Like I mean, they've conditioned us to expect like if you're gonna re-release Zelda with entirely new you know visual art style um and the amount of marketing they've put behind this game yeah. like it's like even the the little toy set that they created for e3 like t- t- like it's a great again nostalgia push but it does feel like nintendo at least with zelda could have iterated more um and yeah, some like surprises maybe or maybe another mode, yeah or maybe there's yeah. like a you know, at the end of Symphony of the Night, there's an inverted castle and you do everything upside down and it's challenging. <laughs> there's different secrets. Like, maybe there could have been a different coda on the end of Link's Awakening. Or, um, or again, maybe it's just, like, the dungeon mode isn't good. So maybe that's yeah. the criticism. Like, maybe if that had been good, right. that would have been... There's, But there's not even a way to share your level. So it's like, that's not even a full <laughs> feature. Like, it doesn't feel full. It definitely feels like they're shoehorning in it just to kind of see, how does this go? Like, what what could this be like? And that's, yeah. that became their like, Twilight innovative Princess thing. Twilight like, was... I believe forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. And Parting. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's basically it. I like the game a lot. Totally recommend it. I just, yeah. I wish it were targeted a little bit less expensively because I feel like it's. If I had to yeah. tell someone to get something Breath of the Wild or that, well, yeah, it's a little confusing. I hope. Well, we get Danny. It. I hope Danny, what are you? Yeah. Are you totally. gonna buy it? Um, I, I'm thinking about it. I guess my my parting question on the topic is gonna be. Do you f- both feel, with all the warts we already talked about, it is a worthwhile holdover in between Breath of the Wild one and two? Yeah. Zelda wise, yes, yeah. yeah, I do. Absolutely, it's still okay. a great Zelda game. So, okay. like, it's it is, and it's still it, I was would still pay six dollars for it. I think it probably should be. And you're part of the problem. <laughs> for sure. and, and you the, are the allowing that, them. The thing about this right. this particular Zelda game, though, is it. It's a wackier yeah. Zelda. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a the world itself and the people you interact with, um yeah. the characters, the whole mingling of like this like this Nintendo like multiverse that seems to like mm-hmm. exist in the space. Love it's that. it's weird because uh, prior to that game there wasn't you know, there wasn't much crossover. Like, mm-hmm. Well you wouldn't you wouldn't see any of that and 
And even just like aside from the Nintendo, like the other Nintendo Mario specific characters, like you just some of the the other characters are just really wacky. Um, which is why like I love this art style because I think it just plays right into all that. So yeah, I yes, it's hard. It's a hard thing to critique in this game. I almost wish it were wackier or like there's Mario stuff. What Even if there been so, yeah. what if there have been Metroid stuff in there? Or what if yeah, there exactly. Been some, some, oh. yeah, Animal Crossing or Splatoon or or like in Wind Waker HD, you can go back through that game. And you get you start out with the the pictograph. You can you can take photos of every character to make the figurines right from the outset in color, which is a kind of an end game feature in the first one that you you had to play multiple times. But when it came out again, I I got every single fig- figurine in Wind Waker HD because it was like it added another layer to it. Like maybe what if like my doll the dollhouse thing I could mode throw a little camera and you could all of a sudden go into first person mode and look around and take a photo and like make it. Yeah. There are some figurines you can collect in this game. So what if there's something like that? You know, just something that kind of twisted up because I do feel like it's a great game. Shadow Colossus HD when it came into PlayStation, one of the greatest games of all time was forty dollars. And like, uh, it's not that doesn't have to be an Apple Styles comparison. Money's different for everyone. I do feel like this package is a little slim, and yeah. especially in we've had uh, amazing Zelda games. That, but that now I, your I last hope, comment, I just want to see all the Nintendo characters in Playmobil form, uh, and I want to own them. All. <laughs> I, I wish. I hope we get a 2D Zelda between now and the end of the Switch Switch's life that is as inventive as A Link Between Worlds. So maybe that is my real thought. This is fine and good. It, I hope we get something that's more. Dan, Danny, don't it, it, just don't go in expecting like I mean, Zeldas are all very different, but at their core, they have that you know mystery exploration, but dungeon like puzzle solving which is really really i think at the heart of, of zelda and a little like weird like fun characters scattered throughout the world and collecting side quests but like this isn't like it's it's a different zelda than of, breath of the wild i feel like this is a tight a little ways. classic zelda game yeah yeah no weird and is always good because there were some weird people in breath of the wild and i enjoyed meeting them right <laughs> yeah. then you're gonna you're gonna really enjoy this game you just i think you have to it's a different uh, brand of Zelda, and I mean, it's a different you started brand pl- than like contemporary Zelda, I would say, yeah, yeah. W- which I I think is for a lot of people is nice because Breath of the Wild was what brought them into Zelda, and mm-hmm. not now you know Nintendo. Th- this lesson. is it's definitely getting the Breath of the Wild bump. This game, mm-hmm. uh, little high rule so. history without high rule, little high rule history, but no <laughs> timeline here, boys, because <laughs> this one is a confusing timeline. But yeah, so we I'll I'll. Uh, I'll I'm trying to finish it in the next couple of weeks because nice. Luigi's Mansion 3 is coming out and I want to pour time into that. Mm-hmm. And I need, I'm just like constantly clocking hours on, um, Fire, on Emblem. Fire Emblem. How yeah. Have you done the time skip? I'm right. I'm like literally right before that. Hmm. So the five year jump. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am, come back and like Hap is in like an emotional support group and he's like, oh, <laughs> each day I keep on fighting. A lot of whales also, out Cap there. has an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about that on the podcast more in depth. Like, this is like going to a little yeah, more in we'll parallel, but I'm trying to do that yeah. in then a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as I play more Link's Awakening, it would be fun to talk about it again because yeah. I think there's a lot to like and I'm mainly focusing on. Especially as a, 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 same same Danny as, as you start to get into it too, especially playing it for the first time. It'll yeah, be fun to talk about it. And yeah. all of those conversations will be right here on ANP. Oh, oh, are you closing us out? Are you are you anyway? I, I, thanks for checking us out. <laughs> thanks for checking reason. us out on the podcast or on YouTube at another Nintendo podcast. No, I refuse. And I want to uh, stay up here on stage. With that, <laughs> I think let's end it for the night. I am Austin Cummings, and with me was Danny Tortelli. That's me. And me and Matt, I'm here. And also <laughs> me and Matt, I'm here. He's buried the lead. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Tune in again, please.
Yeah, sorry, you froze up there for a second. All I heard was a bunch of foghorns going off over and over again. <laughs>